the latest breaking news. We're taking an in-depth look at an important medical issue this Friday, what's known as chemobrain. A new study links a substance found in blueberries that could safely improve cognitive function of breast cancer survivors. Health Team 9's Dr. Randy Shuck helps break it down for us. Joining me now is Dr. Nagy Kumar. Dr. Kumar is the Director of Cancer Chemo Prevention at Moffitt Cancer Center. Thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely, thank you for having me here. Oh, well, we're gonna talk about some fun things today, right? Yes, uh, I yes. understand there's a word out there that you're trying to figure out, chemo brain. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, chemo brain is a phenomenon that uh, we observe in patients uh, who come right out of chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it is children who get chemotherapy or breast cancer patients who get chemotherapy or patients with lymphoma who get chemotherapy have this, uh, uh, this phenomena that they describe as chemo fog or uh, uh, a kind of a memory loss or loss of speed of processing. Mm -hmm. And that's what is called chemo brain. And first they thought it was a very transient that it happened just a few months after someone gets chemo. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's related to depression, anemia, or other things, but now we know after very solid studies that have come out, uh, some from the Moffitt Cancer Center by uh, a Dr. Heather Jim and her group that this in breast cancer patients lasts more than 10 years of survival, post-survival. Mm -hmm. So this is really a serious issue that patients complain about, that they have really lost their executive skills or executive skills are minimized, as well as they have a lot of memory loss, as well as speed of processing. Mm -hmm. And that's chemo brain. And that's chemo brain. Now, is that for all chemotherapies, more specifically for breast cancer? Or I know you're interested in the breast yes. cancer portion. I, I think we have more survivors from breast cancer today than we ever did. Mm -hmm. We have close to 12 million uh, cancer survivors uh, who are breast cancer survivors, who are most vocal. They are, they live very long, um, otherwise healthy lives, mm -hmm. and they want to improve their quality of life. They want to go back to their uh, life, uh, you know, that uh, they once had. So they're the ones who are very vocal and brought this up. And so we're targeting this group first, and then probably will move on to other groups like the pediatric cancer patients, mm -hmm. as well as lymphoma patients. So you were also talking about not just the type of breast cancer, but the type of chemotherapy. You're going to have like yes. an inclusion issues where not everybody has the same problems, but you're studying a specific type. Yes. We're, we're looking at women who get taxane-based therapies, mm -hmm. as well as those who get anthracycline chemotherapy-based therapies. So this is the group we are targeting. These women are probably uh, stage one, two, or three breast cancer, not the stage four breast cancer. And these women also get concurrent um, uh, endocrine therapy or hormonal deprivation therapies. Some of them will also get radiation. Mm -hmm. So this is the group we are targeting uh, to begin with. And hopefully, if we find these results being very positive, we will take it to the other populations that I talked about. Now, currently, there's no treatment for this. So they just kind of ignore it and let it go away on its own. But exactly. you're, you're kind of proposing a new thought pattern using blueberries. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, uh, initially people thought uh, patients are just depressed uh, after the diagnosis and treatment and they never took them seriously. Many of them got uh, antidepressives uh, and uh, this is now a serious issue. Every physician, every oncologist is recognizing this problem and is really uh, uh, looking forward to targeting uh, this issue and resolving it so that they can have a better quality of life. And yes, why blueberries? Yeah. You know, we thought about that. Uh, we first thought of antioxidants in general. Uh, we know that what occurs in the brain uh, is uh, in, in, inflammatory as a result of inflammation mm -hmm. and as a result of oxidative stress. Even though the chemotherapy doesn't cross the blood-brain uh, barrier, we know the effects of chemotherapy crosses the blood-brain barrier. So uh, all these inflammatory processes and uh, oxidative stress processes to the cells of the brain is what causes this. This is, this is what we've seen um, in imaging studies and ex in CT scans or MRIs of the brain of these survivors. Uh, so uh, we can easily target it with uh, antioxidants from vitamins, but we think that they don't have the 
the potency as uh, plant-based antioxidants uh, and also the anti-inflammatories that come from food like omega-3 fatty acids. So that's why we decided to target this problem with a combination of a plant-based very potent antioxidant found in blueberries along with the omega-3 fatty acids which are anti-inflammatories and we know that in animal studies we've seen our group has observed that these plant-based substances and omega-3 fatty acids actually get into the brain mm -hmm. and can induce neurogenesis uh, which is a very positive thing so we, we have seen it in tissues of the brain uh, which we can't say of other anti uh, vitamin antioxidants. Sure. Now, why afterwards? Why do you let them have this problem as opposed to preventing it from happening before it happens? Yes, and I think that's a question every doctor mm -hmm. asks us and every patient uh, will potentially ask us. And the reason being, we want certain amount of cell killing activity during chemotherapy and during radiation therapy. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to interfere in that process. Uh, but you know, it, it may be a future study where we give it to them before they start chemotherapy. Uh, and then again, you know, it has to be in a clinical trial first. So we wanted to wait till they were done with the treatment and then started soon after. So that's why a 30-day window as soon after they complete the treatment is what we are looking at to recruit them. And, right. and uh, speaking of recruitment, this study has not happened yet. You're actually no. in the process of making it happen. So real quickly, tell me who you're looking for and how they get in touch with you. Okay, we're looking for uh, breast cancer patients, as I said, who, are, uh, who have received anthracycline or taxane-based therapy, uh, taxane-based chemotherapy. And when they come right out of chemotherapy, they can call us and we, are, we can recruit them. We recruit them at the Moffitt Cancer Center mm -hmm. uh, within the 30-day window, uh, hopefully plus or minus seven days, mm -hmm. and we will uh, uh, you know, recruit them for the study at that point. They get uh, an MRI of the brain um, to begin with, and after treatment for three months, they get another MRI of the brain. Uh, we are looking at the structure of the brain mm -hmm. as well as the function of the brain. So while they're in the MRI, we give them some tests to do uh, where we check their memory or speed of processing before and after. Mm -hmm. And we also take uh, blood samples from them to look at oxidative stress markers and cytokines and those kind of inflammatory markers before and after treatment. Sounds like a great study. Now, it doesn't look like a blueberry muffin to me, but it looks like it might be the thing that brings our brain back online after chemotherapy. That's right. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. We take an in-depth look at important health issues every Friday right here on Bay News 9. And you can get the latest medical news in our health headlines starting every weekend morning at 5 a.m. and Priority Health every weekday evening at 5 p.m. You can also see this and past in-depth segments on Bay News 9 On Demand. That's Channel 342.